Hello, I'm Kathy McMakin, and when we talk about sewing through the decades, we have to add heirloom sewing. I brought some beautiful examples with me today, and today we're going to learn how to make this little precious baby bonnet. Everybody loves bonnets, and don't they just look great uh, with the little baby face in there instead of on a, a bonnet form. Um, but I, there are day gowns back here, there's christening gowns over here, and they are great examples of heirloom sewing. Now let me show you just how easy it is to do the techniques of heirloom sewing. We'll do just a few. So if you'll look, we have two laces here. We have insertion lace. Insertion lace is a piece of lace that has two straight sides. And edging lace is a piece of lace that has one straight side and one scallop side. Um, so if you'll look, these straight edges of the lace are called headings, H-E-A-D-I-N-G-S. And that is um, the heavy threads that are running through the laces to create that straight border. There are two other pieces that we're going to use with our bonnet. Actually, we'll just use one piece, but I did want to introduce you to entredeau. Entredeau, entredux, entredeur, entredeur, which actually means between two is this little piece here with the ladder running right down the middle of the fabric. Now, when we attach a piece of entredeau, we are just going to see just the ladder when we are finished with this piece. So, we can either use the ladder all by itself, in other words, trim away each side of that fabric, or sometimes we need that fabric to be included in our seam allowance. So that's a little bit about entredeau. Now in our bonnet that we're gonna be making today, we actually have a piece of bridging. If you can see, bridging is just fat entredeau and it is attached the exact same way. But when you're first starting heirloom sewing, sometimes it's easier to work with something larger. So it's always nice to start with something like a bridging. Bridging is a great thing to add to your stash because you can use it open, just like you see here, or we can also use it as beading where we run ribbon through the holes. So you can have it open or closed when you used, when you run ribbon through that. Um, then you also need a piece of fabric, uh, and we're gonna cut that fabric to create other pieces of fabric. So we'll use a lightweight fabric normally, sometimes it's 100% um, cotton, or it can be a poly cotton blend as well. You can do heirloom sewing on other types of fabric as well. So that so let's kind of look. We'll get started with all these techniques. So let's go to the sewing machine and we'll talk about the techniques that are used. So let's look at this board. Um, we have several different pieces of lace insertion. Um, if you'll notice with your lace insertion, all we're going to do to attach a piece of lace to another piece of lace is just butt them together and zigzag them. When you start to put your laces together, one of the first things you're going to notice is that your laces have pattern. And you can either choose to alternate the patterns, match the patterns, or just pick up your lace however they end up and stitch them together. So let's look at this example. If you want to match your patterns, do you see how we have our, our flowers that are right across from each other? Um, or we could alternate them so that we have a flower and a flower and a flower and a flower zigzagging across the two pieces. Or if we just start and line them up cut edge to cut edge, that's going to be more of a random selection. Which way is right? Any way you want to do it is just fine. We also have people that say, now which is the right and wrong side of a piece of lace? If you can honestly tell, then you always want to sew with the right sides looking at you. But most of the time, really, even with a magnifying glass, it would be very hard to tell. So we would say whichever side you like the best is the right side. So 
Um, now that we have talked about our patterns, we need to set our sewing machine. And we're using a lightweight needle, um, a 60 or a 70 needle. And we're also using lightweight thread, uh, both top and bobbin, both needle and bobbin. So that when we sew these things together, that the stitches um, have the most opportunity to disappear. Now today, for example, we're gonna use, um, we're gonna use pink thread um, so that you can see the stitches. So here we go. We're going to pick up these two pieces and we're going to put them under the machine. And we have our machine set up for a zigzag. And our zigzag is set so that it is almost a satin stitch, but not quite. And we're going to line it up so that we are right in the center of the foot and we have our two headings butted up against each other. So they're just touching. And then we want to lower our presser foot. And if you'll notice, we do not ever, ever, ever in our whole entire life start on the cut edge of the laces. If you do sometimes, no matter how much you've paid for your machine, it'll take the lace right down into the machine so the machine will eat your lace. Um, but if you'll always remember to start about a quarter inch from the cut edge with your first zigzags, then the back of your foot holds your pieces underneath your foot and keeps it from going down in the machine. So what we're going to do is zigzag now, holding our laces together. And so, do you see how easy that is? So all we're doing is zigging on one piece, zagging on the other piece, and the laces have now joined each other, and that heading has become one heading. So we'll take this one out. We can bring it back over here and show you. Do you see how pretty that is? Even with pink, it's pretty. But of course, you would want to use the same color thread as your fabric. Now, let's talk about our next technique. Um, our next technique is bridging to lace. And all we have to do is remove the one fabric edge and we're going to butt this together and we're going to do the exact same technique again. So let's look at that technique since we've already done it. Do you see how we've now pushed, butted the heading of the lace to the trimmed edge of that bridging and we've done the exact same thing again. Sometimes we need to widen our zigzag just a hair to get over the bar of the bridging. Now, let's talk about one other technique that we use quite a bit in heirloom sewing and that is lace to fabric. We do that a lot on the edges of ruffles and just all sorts of places um, when we do heirloom sewing. In, when we do this particular technique, what you're going to do is you're going to place your lace to your fabric like this and you're going to zigzag off the edge and into the heading, off the edge and into the heading, off the edge and into the heading so that when we complete this technique, we have rolled that little excess, that eighth of an inch that was extended, we have rolled that in using a zigzag. So let me show you how easy that is. We're gonna increase our zigzag to about a three five. We're gonna stick it underneath the machine. So the heading of the lace is actually to the left of the center of our foot and the edge of the fabric is wherever it ends up when you um, have that eighth of an inch extension over there or sixteenth of an inch. You just have to have a tad over there. Um, and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna zigzag over the heading and off the edge. Over the heading and off the edge. So let's show you how easy it is. And this is called rolling and whipping and we're going to roll and whip that in place. So you see how easy that is? It just rolls that little lip of fabric into that zigzag and creates a nice sturdy seam. Now we have one other technique that we need to talk about, then we'll go to our bonnet. 
What you're going to do is you're going to, um, we're going to do gathered fabric to bridging or entredeau. Um, in this case, bridging. You run two gathering rows of stitching about uh, an eighth of an inch and then another one about five eighths to a half of an inch from the edge of your fabric. And then to attach that, you're going to run a row of straight stitch against the gathers and then you're going to run a second row and then you're going to trim close and then you're going to overcast off the edge and into the ditch, off the edge and into the ditch. So now let's talk about our bonnet for a second. We have some notions that we've um, collected that you might uh, enjoy using when you do heirloom sewing. We've got some glass head pins and some glue pins, uh, wash away basting tape, and of course a fabric marker. We'll set those aside. These are the pieces that we need uh, for our bonnet. So you can see we have fabrics and laces and, and, um, and we also have our ruffle and our edging. And then we have our ribbons for the edge. Now, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna show you briefly how to create this precious little bonnet. And we'll bring this bonnet over here so that you can see it. Um, so what we've done is we've, we now have bridging and three laces together, another piece of bridging. So we would start with our laces, our bridging on each side. We attach our fabric to bridging and then our gathered fabric to our bridging and our ruffle already had our edging attached before we gathered it. Then that piece is gonna be about 14 inches. We need for the base of our bonnet to be between five and a half and six when it is finished and that would be from the bridging to the back of the casing. Um, all you have to do to finish this little bonnet is fold the edges to the inside once and again, top stitch those in place and then you're gonna put a casing in the back. You run your ribbon through the back and then you're gonna do a little straight stitch back and forth to hold the ribbon into the casing. And then you're gonna attach your ribbon ties on the side. And there you have it, a beautiful heirloom bonnet.